I think that's all Jerry. I think it's Jerry. I'm not going to lie. I think it's Jerry. I don't think it's Coach. I think Jerry is the one who's calling the shots behind the scene and guess who got to be the fall guy. I'm not even going to put it on McCarthy. But then, that, makes McCarthy but then that goes to prove the point. He's a weak coach. If he allows but Jerry it, Jones it, to dictate what he does coach, on the field, every coach. when he knows that his job is ultimately responsible to his performance, if you're going to let Jerry Jones tell you what to do on your field, you're a weak coach. Welcome to another session with them Dennis boys. You got your boy B. Debo. DJ. We're going to do this little madness Monday after the Cowboys got their teeth kicked in by the dang Detroit Lions at home, 47 to 9. So uh, we're going to get into it and let Debo give his first little spill and rant on about this ugliness we just experienced. Ugly it is and madness I am. So. I don't even know where to start, really. It just was an all-around ugly performance by us. I just really can't believe we laid down to them like that. Mm -hmm. It was embarrassing that they was doing what they was doing in terms of uh, throwing the lineman in the ball, lineman out there running routes like he a tight end. And it's just mm – -hmm. that was embarrassing. I was just so disinterested by the third quarter. I was just like, man, where, I, let me go get some more food and drink. Like That's the only <laughs> thing that's going to make me feel good about yesterday, so. Right. That that right there was ridiculous. I just don't even know where to start. Um, yeah, uh, Dak did it to us again in, in, in the red zone, and uh. that's just my biggest issue with him. And like, I understand why he feel like he has to force the ball to CD Lamb. Like he's not even reading the defense. And that was a good like, drive too. Man. That was a nice right, drive. Right, and it's it's the, it's demoralizing to the team. Period. Like it's just. Right. The defense stops them once, and then you come down. We drive and try to get back into the game. Turn the ball over. I was like, man, you cannot do that to the. You can't do these kind of things because we're already shorthanded anyway. So, mm. now, I mean, on the flip side of that, also, I mean, we're shorthanded on defense in the show yesterday because of the talent that the Lions do have. Mm. Um, their D lines whooped our butt, mm. and like I've been hearing everybody else said, we just playing soft, just playing on soft. Cowboy football, and that's exactly what it looked like. The culture. The culture. So that was really that was really the best description of what we was out there. So mm -hmm. that's my spiel. Mm -hmm. Good. It's the culture, though. You're right. Go ahead, yeah. Dad. Well, it's be it's, it seems to be becoming the culture um, as we go forward. Uh, it's obvious that uh, what Jerry Jones thought this season was going to be, and the team he thought he had. It's definitely not either of those. Um, yeah, yesterday was an embarrassment. It was ridiculous, as Devin stated earlier. Um, there's enough fingers to be pointed all the way around. Um, I'm going to start with what I've always started with when we started this season in terms of um, preparedness. Our coaches didn't have us prepared for that game. Um, as usual, when we suffer a beatdown like we did, and that's at in our own home, we're like, what, 0-4 now for the last four games at home? Um, mm -hmm. You know, though we're 3-3, three and three, I mean, that's a little concession because you still have time to do um, some damage as with the rest of the season. Um, that said, uh, yes, Dak let us down again yesterday, and uh, it seems to be coming a trend now, which the, the trend becomes a problem. Uh, but there's enough things to go around in terms of that performance yesterday. That um, he's not the only one which should be pointing out, as Devin alluded to earlier. Uh, the defense wasn't. Uh, we weren't a defense yesterday. Um, 
You know, we big spent a lot of time chasing um, wide receivers. We had the embarrassment of having one of those trick plays run against us time after time again. Um, we were outmanned on both sides of the ball terribly. I mean, they just pushed us, shoved us, did anything they wanted to do with us in terms of pressing up. And that goes back to what Devin alluded to earlier about, you know, being soft. Granted, we're missing some of our key defensive players, but when it comes down to getting in those trenches, it's man or man o and it's about beating your man and beating the matchups, and we did none of that That's yesterday. It was embarrassing um, to the mm-hmm. point that we didn't look like a professional football team. We looked just the opposite. Um, uh, defensively, when we look at uh, we're not getting any push up front, the tackling was horrible. I mean, mm-hmm. we couldn't bring – anybody down. They were, they were dragging us up field, running through us. They basically did anything they wanted to do with us. Offensively, of course, Dak threw his, his picks. Um, and we just couldn't get any flow going. Um, the, the running game, we didn't even really give that a chance uh, because we were so far behind at, at, at a certain point that, you know, that we just had to try to throw our way out of it. We already know from past experiences that's a bad thing for us. It doesn't work for us that well, especially with Dak not being in his bag right about now. So, um, hmm. you know, overall, I just, I'm just embarrassed by our performance. I'm embarrassed by the coach's performance. I'm embarrassed by a lack of heart. We didn't show any heart yesterday. And it's just not a team that I'm proud of right now. Hmm. Well, it started from the top, man. It, Jerry put his team together. I mean, you can't be surprised. He didn't do anything to to improve the team. He, we had subtractions, not no additions. You know what I'm saying? Not no real ones, no real impacts. And, and it showed. You know, we, we just extended a Zach Martin you know, last offseason that looking like a shell of himself. Uh, we saw him almost get pancaked in one play. Like, that's, that's very alarming. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so – we just got dominated in every facet of the game. I mean, the, the numbers speak for themselves. They had the, the ball 34 minutes compared to our 25 minutes, um, 27 first downs to our 16, 492 total yards uh, offense, you know what I'm saying, 300 yards passing, 184 on the ground. Like, that's just pure domination. You know, and, and that's why they was able to do all them little trick plays because they could do whatever they wanted to do. They would just run the ball down the throat. Like, uh, Dave Montgomery would just, just – bullying the whole defense like he was running through the boys like they were paper um it, it, it just all off everything just fell off Dak just he had one a couple good drives going man and then it would just fizzle out and then that pick in, in the red zone like Debo said man that's that's just a, a, a morale killer like you, you, your offense has been struggling all this time you have a good nice strong drive like that you get it within and then within the 10 and you just throw an ugly pick like that that's demoralizing for real. Like you, you can't do that, man. As as a leader, uh, in a, as a quarterback with a struggling team, like you cannot, you know, make your team go all the way down there and not get no points out of. It. That's 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 that can't happen. Defensively, we just soft. We we soft, man. Like we just running through, getting to that second level with the linebackers, man. Overshone, the only one. He the only one who's still consistently flashing and making plays. Donovan Wilson. Donovan had a Wilson. Game Donovan Wilson showed up. Now he did. He play. showed up. He, 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 like put some, up. He, he put some licks out there yesterday. But besides them two, them the only ones that really flashed out there. You know who only really showed up. But that's again in the secondary. We need some of the D line production. That that's where where it starts at. So we we we're failing in the in, in the line of scrimmage battle. So we fell in there. We're gonna fail the rest of the year as well. So. It ain't looking too good, man. We might have to look at the schedule again and reanalyze these uh, predictions on these schedules because uh, we ain't hitting no double. Well, I'm looking at I'm Dang. looking at the way we started out yesterday, and you have a, a, a running back that's coming mm-hmm. off a hundred and twenty something yard game, arguably the mm-hmm. best rushing performance that we've had all season, and then you're gonna bring him off the bench. I mean that was that 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 was a bad move right there from the beginning. You got the momentum. It was. You know, you when, and then when he, when he did put him in the game, he was productive. Exactly. He was getting by y'all again. Exactly. Then you went back to where you started at again. To me, that's not very – that's stupid coaching. I hate to say it. Right. Right. There are only 13 rushes between Zeke and 
Rico. That's ridiculous. It is. Like that's what I'm talking about every week. We keep we bail on the run and then wonder why we playing from behind because we're not trying to control the game. You know no. what I mean? And like we get we be getting I done seen instances where we literally got five yards on first down and then in second and five. And we go to throwing the ball, and now we in third and five. Now you feel like you got to throw the ball. Like you're yeah, gonna get a penalty going. Yeah, it's, it's coaching. It's it is. It, or there's a it's penalty coaching. that that drives us back another five or ten yards, which right. is because hey, we had eight penalties again. I mean, no, they had eight penalties this week, but they, we had four. You know, so, but still, and they and they're trying to and they're trying to like you said, they're trying to put the ball in Dak hands when you don't have to. No. Just he needs to be quarterback by committee. Mm-hmm. We need to run the ball. Throw the ball when need to, and then we will see results but, every time. CD you, will be wide open because we open up the run game. First, you had you had uh, between games, you had Zeke complaining about his usage. So, as a coach, you're just gonna forget what you've been doing that's been successful and bow down because a player is complaining about his his playing time. I mean, that's just a weak coach. Okay, you're right. just weak. You don't stop. And that's a reflection to the team. That's why the team is a little weak. I, and I think that's all Jerry. I think it's Jerry. I'm not going to lie. I think it's Jerry. I don't think it's Coach. I think Jerry is the one who's calling the shots behind the scene and guess who got to be the fall guy. I'm not even going to put it on McCarthy. But then, that, makes McCarthy him, but then that goes to prove the point. He's a weak coach. If he allows but Jerry it, Jones it, to dictate what every he does coach on the field, every coach. when he knows that his job is ultimately responsible to his performance, if you're going to let Jerry Jones tell you what to do on your field, you're a weak coach. But every time, think about it, every time we've had a coach who gave Jerry Jones any pushback, what happens? They get fired. They get fired. Yeah, Jerry would, don't do that I pushback. I wouldn't be opposed to that in this case. <laughs> but but it's not it's not McCarthy's fault. That's what I'm saying. McCarthy is not the – He's just been he against man. Up for. Not McCarthy fault. knew what he signed up for, and Jerry Jones knew who he was signing when he well, got. I, 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 I won't like absolve him of that um, of that responsibility because ultimately, the bottom line is the preparation of a team for a game is in the hand of the head coach. Head coach. So if you don't have your team, and that team definitely looked like a team that wasn't prepared to play that game yesterday, that's coaching. Okay, I don't think I don't. I would not put that on Jerry Jones. I put that on those guys that. Have those guys in the meeting rooms every week, getting prepared for a game. That's coaching. They did not prepare that team. They weren't mentally ready. They weren't physically ready, and that means the coaches didn't get them ready. I think they just went by this as, as a we're home, it's a business as usual type situation, and we're going to play it as such. And so would they got them. So do you think do you think they're trying to lay it down? You know, because they're they're not willing to play for Mike no more. You think he's lost the locker room? I really don't. I don't. I don't think we have that type of locker room because, first of all, you, you, it takes cohesion to do that, and we're not a very mm-hmm. cohesive team. So I, I, I would not give him that much credit. That's real. We just a, a, a business professional organization. That's the kind of players we bring in. We don't bring them players in with that nasty. You know what I mean? No. Everybody is formal. Everybody is. They're not going to say the wrong things in the Hollywood, media. Like man. them, the guys at Jerry Hollywood. like. That's the Sometimes. Hollywood thing, man. Everybody there going there for celebrity, man, to be a celebrity. That's it. But the and one good, the one good point about yesterday is Jerry Jones, just like we did, had to sit mm-hmm. through that travesty, and he had to hear the booze on his team. birthday. I'm yeah, glad he on, did yeah, too. on his birthday. He had to hear those same booze we heard um, against yeah. the Cowboys. So if that doesn't do anything to motivate you, why? Why do we still? I'm still questioning. Why do we have Dalvin Cook sitting on a private squad? Why bring him? I think why'd you, even, keep away. why'd you even bring him? At this point. Why'd you even bring him? I think they're playing keep away from whoever. Because yeah, there's no reason why he shouldn't have been suiting up by now. At least suited up. Like he, he gotta be activated after this uh after this bye week. Got to be. If if he, not, I mean, even if nothing less, he brings a different dynamic to your team. He he mm-hmm. gives you a little bit more hope because this is something that we hadn't seen already. And, and plus is what we need. We need a, a good running back. I mean, mm-hmm. Dollar was good, but he needs someone mm-hmm. in, in support. Zeke is not that guy anymore. Zeke need to go to practice squad. Zeke, we, yeah, we need to flop. Yes, yeah. place. We need, we need reserve him. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I could send McCarthy to the practice squad for making that move to 
put Zeke in over Donald, I'd send his ass there too. I'm just, I'm just yeah. saying. You know, I mean, that was terrible. How are you going to take a, a man just coming up a 120-something yard game and sit him on the bench for somebody who barely is giving you 20 yards in the whole season? Yeah. That just doesn't right. make sense to me. That's just bad, poor coaching. I'm sorry. You about that. Yeah. So uh, going into this bye week, man, what do y'all think uh, can possibly happen? What do you think, you know, they got in the works or should have in works? Well, we can use the bye week to go to church Sunday. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah. Y'all need to be in there for real. Get saved hey, again. And say, and say our, our, our heavenly fathers, our, our fathers, that to send us some yeah. help. Hail Mary, whatever you need to do. I, I, don't, I think, I mean, based on me watching Jerry's interview, he's not going to do anything. Hmm. <laughs> He's going to sit here and just watch this ride happen. And like I said, we just got to buckle up and just mm-hmm. take the ride because, I mean, we don't know where it's going. But what's it? Mm-hmm. What, what would we be don't his, know where this ride going. What would, be his, what would be his incentive for doing that? What, what, why, why would he do that? Why would he not make a change? He just he just hoping in some clear blue sky that we – something falls in our lap in terms of everybody getting healthy and then we come back and playing, playing good again. That's, that's really what he's thinking. He really mm-hmm. think that our issue ain't bigger than the players being hurt. And really our issue is way bigger than being hurt. They, mm-hmm. We we would have looked just how we look even if we was healthy yesterday. Because you know why? It's the way we playing. The way we playing is bad. We playing bad football. And and why are we playing bad football? Coaching. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, exactly. yeah, for sure. Your coach is supposed well, to prepare you for football games. I can't get on. I mean, or is it a personnel coach. issue? It could be a personnel issue too. That's an upstairs uh, problem. And I'm, I'm, a, and I'm gonna take it a step further to why you kind. You're right. I'm not gonna bash that because it really isn't his fault in terms of them putting him in certain situations. You know what you have. So why week after week you keep putting him in certain situations to have to try to make certain plays? that we know he cannot make. Just stop putting him in those situations. Let's run the ball more. Let's kill the clock. Let's get the game going. And then once everybody get their confidence going, then, hey, that's when things start to flow. That's when he's going to start looking for this person, looking for that person. He didn't even look for Ferguson like that yesterday. And I'm just like, this this is just terrible football. Like, what is this? Yeah, that I mind, I don't know where his mind is. He just didn't look – Right in the eyes and nothing yesterday. He just didn't. I just he don't get it. He, he, he did look. A, he did have like a blank look on his face yesterday. I didn't see a lot of emotion or a, a lot of mm-hmm. anything going from him yesterday. I just. Uh, uh, but then, that unfortunately, could be, that's how he is at home. But then that that mm-hmm. could describe the whole team because they all look like deers in headlights yesterday. I mean, they look like yeah. they were they were not just there. They were just a show of themselves, you know. I mean, he I got know. hit with a sledgehammer, man, at the crib. I don't know if his baby, the baby at home, when he's home taking care. I mean, you know, his, that's where his mind at or what. But we yeah, didn't play all that game on the road. You better get a nanny. Hey, <laughs> Sal. I'm sure you got one. Man. You need to get sure two of them. Yeah, um, yeah, but y'all don't, y'all don't foresee them making any moves or anything, Dad. You know what you gonna? What are you gonna move to? What you gonna get? What's out there? I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Right. You got to do something. If not, I mean, you're going to be this season going to look just like that. Every time we play somebody I, I like that, we got to be next six games. I haven't even I looked at the free agent list in, I don't, in weeks because why? Why look at it? What do you know you're not going to make a trade, man? You know, make you're a trade. trade. Do something. Be you got, you got do assets. something. Like, make a trade, man. You what, can go what, and get what assets do you have that we can afford to trade away? Is another draft question. Pick. Picks. Picks. Better make sure what you got trade. Remember now, we I, I give up. I mean, we got some depth. We got some depth. We can trade too now. We can we can trade some depth away. For, for, for a good legit player, I will give up a second or a third round pick easy, without a doubt, sure. because we didn't sure. have some busts in the last couple years that were second and first round picks. Yeah. So it's no. It's to me, it's those second round picks are, are, are a roll of a dice anway. Yeah. yeah so I'll, why wouldn't you go and get a player that you know somebody sure. know legit? But we've also used our, our draft picks uh, to our advantage and, and build a, a decent team over the years, too. So I can't of course, really, I we're not we're trading we're, away draft pick. If you're going to trade that draft pick away, you better damn sure make sure it's for, for but a productive play. What I'm saying is, all in all, what I'm saying is a draft pick is a roll of dice anyway. So if you know what you're getting and you're giving up this pick, then it's worth it. Like, it, mm-hmm. to me, it, it makes – it. You it's a win-win. It's a win-win because you're only giving up one or two picks, 
and those one or two picks could be bust. That's how I'm seeing. You, you trading for a, a, a sure star or somebody to contribute for sure? Absolutely. Man, that's a, that's what, a win. That's a hit on, a, is, on that pick. What is the last trade that we made? That's the problem. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even tell you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We don't trade. Mari Cooper. Well, and that was like, what, three I years ago? All right. I mean, we don't trade. Three or four years ago, maybe. We, that's not in our DNA. We don't trade, and we, rarely, and we rarely ever pick up free agents. So that being said, where we at? Well, I mean, well, I guess we wouldn't got Trey Lance, but, I mean, we ain't giving really – the chance to play, so I mean that yeah. was just no way, a move no made, in which we gave up a fourth round pick for that. So if you give up a fourth round, shoot, you might well give up a second round too at some point. True. You know, this this far this deep into the season, teams have got their teams pretty set, and I'm not sure a lot of them are willing to part. With it's them. a lot of let me say there's Never a lot know. of unhappy players out there that we can go get. Calvin Never know Ridley is at. one of them. Mm-hmm. We talked about it yesterday. Calvin really is one of them who's unhappy. Yeah, I'll take him. I'll I'll give him a fourth him. round for him. Yeah, I give him a fourth round. They'll take a fourth round for him. He just grown him, so he he got to be discounted. Right. I'll take him real quick. He so, he'll be over. <laughs> um, sure. What's that uh, player for the Jets that hadn't signed yet? Um, uh, oh, Hassan Reddick. Yeah, I mean, I thought about that too, but you know he want to get paid. I don't think we got we can get older enough. Hey, he is older. Hey, hey, we, yeah, we, might, we, we might pay like 10, 12. We maybe. do pay people. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, you know. I mean, if he producing, hey, I, I'll pay him. We do pay people. Now, one one, one uh, situation that I really hate seeing Sunday in and Sunday out is Derrick Henry running over everybody. Everybody. Man, that's it. That's, and I it know, made me smile. I ain't going to lie. And I it know Jerry smile. Jones like, is... is, is is, yeah, yeah. I know he got to feel that. Mm-hmm. There's no way he doesn't. Yeah, got Raven, like, Raven got. They, they got a good little formula going over. They're gonna be tough. Man, gonna be just take what we could have been with Derrick Henry. They could have been us. That's a one man um, team right there. By the the he He's scoring two yeah. yeah. touchdowns every game. Every game. Yeah, yeah. Lamar, Lamar yeah. about to have a. Uh, uh, he gonna have a run this year. Yeah, we could have went and got Kareem Hunt too. Kareem Hunt. But I don't even know. That, that would be perfect. Oh yeah. my goodness! Y'all been perfect. That's what I'm saying. I, like we, I wanted them last year. It's it's so many moves that could be made, but we know we ain't gonna make them. So it's just like we we know who our owner is. We know what they're about. Like it's just the same thing over and over again, man. It's got to buckle up, take the ride. But you know, man, we talk man, about we got to take it. We talk about um, you know fans putting up with Jerry Jones and um, his lack of whatever um but you know and especially me as being the elder statement elder statement here um mm-hmm. i've been around for a long time been a cowboy fan since 1970 i'm going to count the years and mm-hmm. we had some great times but we also had some really bad times and as fans you know that's that's what makes a fan a fan you know let's talk about it for a second what makes you a fan? And I always tell everybody I'm a fanatic. You know, I, I, we talk this noise and, you know, we, we, we uh, are disgruntled about team situations. But guess what? Next year we'll be back doing the same thing again if we're not successful. Um, but I think the Jones also recognize that. And to like what Devin said earlier, you know, they're not – feeling any impetus to make moves. And, I mean, it's not fair to the fans, especially given the amount of money that um, people shell out to see the play, buying the paraphernalia, um, and everything else involved with the team that makes him a billionaire. You know, um, it's just, you know, at some point in time, Jerry needs to just, and I'm not even so sure the next level down, Stephen Jones. I'm not sure his mindset would be even. I'm not confident that he would be any different because if he had, nah, he gonna be the same way. If he had same any way. type of, of input or any type of way in terms of the operation of this team, we would have seen it by now with him stopping some of the things that Jerry has done or making moves that Jerry hasn't made. 
So, you know, as a fan, you know, it's a, it's a difficult place for us to be in. We don't want to give up on our team. Nobody wants to give up on your team. You just want to see them be better. But, you know, mm-hmm. it just, it's just, that just further exasperate the situation in terms of how, how things are viewed um, and where we're going in terms of being a fan. I mean, if you let if you let Jerry tell it, it's Stephen Jones who the one holding him back for from making crazy ac- accusations and not accusations, uh, uh, ac- transitions. Yeah. Right, like mm-hmm. yeah, I heard it's him. I heard yeah. it's Stephen Jones the, the problem holding him back. But well, who's next in line? After, who's somebody. next in line after Stephen? We need to talk to that dude. <laughs> hey, I think you probably right. just them two in the room. Just them two in the room uh, I it. remember when we was on Hard Knocks one time, and they was talking about making a trade. And he, he with Jerry Jones said Stephen Stephen Jones on the reason why he didn't pull the trigger on a, on some kind of trade. It was mm. I don't remember what trade it was, but he was like he, he's the reason we don't rate make certain trades. So. Yeah, I, I remember. I don't I know. He, trade now he tried to get Johnny Manziel. Though. I remember that. Which one? Stephen shot it down. Who? Yes, huh? Johnny Manziel. He tried to get Johnny Manziel. Right. Good move. So. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. So I believe Jerry Jones probably tried to make drastic measures. I just think you got somebody who right behind him like Stephen Jones. Like, mm-hmm. nah, that's not a good cap move. And then you end up paying the people who's there who's not even putting out. So, And, and man, it's like Will McClay ain't even in the room no more. <laughs> No, nah, he probably just beat them two in and they call him in every now and then and ask his opinion. Bro. Man, like, give me a list. They need to bring him on up in there. Um, just, they do. They need to let him run it. He need to be the guy. Right. He need to be the guy. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. let him have his own little GM office, give him a sign yep. and everything. Make it official, give him a parking spot and everything. Make Will McClay the GM and let him rock the show and let him turn that franchise around. If we do have mm-hmm. to make some changes, one of the changes I like to see is uh, – I, I, to me personally, I think the game has passed uh, Zimmerman by. Um, yeah. I just don't think his schemes are fit to stop, you know, especially if you got weak personnel in it. You know, it's not going to – he's not going to be able to coach them up to the level to be competitive, you know, even with our mm-hmm. best players in there. I mean, we've seen that already. We could always hope. But, I, you know, I'd really like to see Al Harris take that room over, you know. I just think they – yeah, I think simply – I'll be cool. if, we, if we just blitz, I just really think that would just change so much. I think that'll uh, kill the time that people have to get down the field in terms of you know that big play they made with Patrick down the field. I'm like, well, if we put a little pressure on the quarterback, he wouldn't even have time to throw that. But and the best still play, an ugly and play, and I'll play to our cornerback strength. The bad, th- the bad thing about it throw. is the bad thing about it is Zimmerman used to be that guy. He used to be the one to dial up those blitzes blitz, blitz like that. I'm sorry, but uh, he, and when we blitz, you see what happens. Yeah. When we blitz, we get us. We either get a sack or we get something. Something good happens. Like true. So I don't. Yeah. I don't understand. Anything is better than getting sitting back there getting picked apart like we do. Good football. I mean, That's you, know, you I can know. always tell it's going to be a completion because the quarterback is sitting that back there for about five seconds, looking around, scouring mm-hmm. the field, having a drink. Mm-hmm. You know. Before you throw the ball. And if you blitz the play action, you can't play action because I'm blitzing it. You ain't got time to do it. And now you just got to drop back and just throw the ball. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's just hard. It's just that when you, when, just you see, when you see that opposing quarterback sitting that, back there for a minute and then you in your seat, mm-hmm. you do it like this here. <laughs> you know what's coming. You know what's coming. Right. There's no secret yeah. about it because they're going to find somebody nice. open because you're giving them more. The, the, the receiver's trying to make a second move. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Basketball. I just hate playing yeah. Jared Goff because that's all he do is play action. Every pass is play action, play action. Gadgets yeah. in the backfield. Like, just blitz it. <laughs> if you blitz all that, you can't do none of that in the backfield. I mean, Man. we've changed yeah. because we used to control him. We used to dominate him. He never was an issue right. for us. But then we used to dominate the Lions, too. But guess what? And then, different teams. Fun they made a lot of moves. They changed a lot of personnel. They've got a hell mm-hmm. of a team now. And they wouldn't be surprised to see them in the Super Bowl. Be with yeah, that's the thing that they offer the line, man. That that's a superstar off of the line for real, for real. Like and they, and they they showed it. Like they dominated us. Like they were pushing all down the field. Like right. they were down there pushing down the field, like five yards down the field with David Montgomery. I'm like, man, that's a dominant line. Yeah, I really see. Uh, I hate to see um, uh, Hutchinson get hurt yesterday. I mean, he's a beast. He's True. Yeah, that was bad. That was bad. Yeah, I didn't want to see that. Bad. That, that yeah. was. Uh, 
I hate, I hate to see any player going down, but I hate to see them lose can def- a player. They can like definitely Tyler. flip their season upside down for sure. Yeah. Oh, for so, sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it could. Mm-hmm. Playing against a better team. Playing against a better team. That's what the offense is going to have to do, but they scoring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, is, he, is, he is special talent for sure. Yeah, yeah. I hated that for him. Prayers out yeah. to him and him, his family. Yeah, no yeah, doubt. Was bad. Bad. Was bad. 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 No doubt. Mm-hmm. Respect. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we got some fun, fundamental failures, you know, that that's really going to hamper us all year, man. I don't know how they're going to fix it, but uh, I guess we got to pray for it. But <laughs> hey, the bye week, I already told you, it's the bye week. You can go to church this week. Hey, <laughs> man, they're going to have to do a lot of praying, for real, for real. <laughs> they got to go to uh, vacation Bible study or uh, Bible school. That's where they need to go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, on that note, man, we're going to wrap this session up, man. Thank y'all for listening to us on these – just ran about that butt kicking we took. But uh, till next time, we'll holler at y'all.